from Pondicherry Institute of Medical Sciences. Today we are going to discuss about general features of scapula, its side determination and its anatomical position. So this is scapula, it is a flat bone which is present on the posterolateral aspect of the thoracic cavity. So uh, there are two scapulas, that is right sided scapula and left sided scapula. So now we will come with general features. There are two surfaces, the coastal surface and the dorsal surface. So in this, this is the coastal surface which is concave in nature and it is also called as the subscapular fossa and this is the dorsal surface which is convex in nature and now the angles there are three angles the superior angle inferior angle and the lateral angle so in this this is the superior angle which, uh, and this is the inferior angle and this is the lateral angle the superior angle is covered by the trapezius muscle the inferior angle is covered by the latissimus dorsi muscle and the lateral angle we can see a cavity which is pear shaped and it is called the glenoid cavity and hence the name it is the glenoid angle this gives attachment to the head of the humerus forming the shoulder joint now coming to the borders, there are three borders, the lateral border, medial border and the superior border. This is the lateral border which is very thick and rod like. It is present between the glenoid cavity and the inferior angle and this is the medial border with this, which is thin and is present in between the superior angle and the inferior angle. And this is the superior border which is very sharp and if we trace it laterally we can see a small notch, it is called the suprascapular notch. And now coming to the process, there are three processes, the spinous process, acromion process and coracoid process. So now we will see about the spinous process. This is the spinous process and it is present on the dorsal surface of scapula and divides the scapula into supraspinous fossa and the infraspinous fossa. These two fossa are communicating with each other through this cavity called the spinoglenoid cavity. And now uh, we will see about spinous process. It is a triangular shape uh, process and it has two surfaces and three borders. The two surfaces are superior surface and inferior surface and the borders are anterior border which is uh, the anterior border is fused with the dorsal surface and this is the posterior border and it is called as a crest of spine and it has two lips, the upper lip and the lower lip. If we trace the crest of the spine medially, we will find the root of the spine and if we trace it laterally, we will go to the sec uh, second process that is the acromion process and now the third uh, border of the spinous process forms the uh, spinoglenoid cavity. And now coming to the acromion process, it has two borders, the lateral border and the medial border, the, uh, two surfaces, the superior surface and the inferior surface. And it has an uh, articulating facet which articulates with the clavicle that is the collarbone. And now coming to the coracoid process. The coracoid process comes from the Greek word and it means the beak of the crow. So it, as it resembles the crow's beak, it is called the coracoid process. Now coming to the uh, side determination of scapula. So the glenoid cavity should be facing laterally and the inferior angle should be downwards and the lateral border should be lateral and the spinous and the acromion process should be facing uh, behind and the coastal surface should be placing, uh, placed anteriorly. So this is the right sided scapula and now coming to the uh, anatomical position. The coastal surface should be placed uh, facing anteriorly and a bit medially. The glenoid cavity should be facing laterally and a bit forward and upward and the coracoid process should be facing almost forward. So this is the anatomical position. So now we have seen about the general features, the side determination and anatomical position. Thank you.